Alrighty guys, welcome back to another one. In today's video, we're doing something that a few of you guys have been asking about for a while. We're gonna duplex some steel and bismuth here. You guys have also requested steel and TSS. Well, I only have around three ounces of TSS left, so that might have to wait until I can get some more. That stuff is quite uh, pricey. Anyway, yeah, steel and bismuth. This is going to be a one and three eighth ounce total assembly. We're using 7 8 ounce of number 3 steel and half ounce of number 4 bismuth. This is based off a tested assembly that I believe Keith at Salt Creek sent me a while back. I could be wrong about that. We've had a bunch of people send us stuff, but I'm pretty sure this one came from Keith. However, as I said, it's going to be a slightly modified version of it. I don't have the exact components that was in the, uh, the one that I was sent. I, again, think it's from Keith. But I have stuff that's very close to it. We are using this stuff right here. One of my favorites. It's a very slow powder, 43. This stuff is good for up to three ounces in 10 gauge. It's a very, very slow powder. Anyway, a brand new Shadot Hall. This one's green, doesn't matter the color, but it is a brand new prime Shadot Hall. LBC 50. We will need to slit that ourselves because that is unslit. The original data that I was sent called for 42 and it was running around 1300, 1330. I want just a little bit more velocity than that. This is going to be pushing around that 1380 mark, I believe, and upwards of 11,000 PSI. So pretty up there. It's close to three inch 12 gauge max anyway, but just a little bit off. As for the shot sizes, I don't have what was in the original tested assembly. I have in this pickle jar here, number three steel, which is actually my preferred size. If I were to duck hunt, that would it would be number three steel. And for the bismuth, number four. Yep, number four bismuth. We are using seven eighth ounce of the steel and half ounce of the number four bismuth. It's going to be a one and three eighth ounce total assembly. Obviously the steel being uh, lighter than bismuth, you will have higher pellet count that with it than the bismuth. The bismuth will hit a little bit harder because it's a little bit denser material. It's not quite as dense as lead, but it is quite a bit more dense than steel is. Therefore, again, it's going to hit a little bit harder. Now, with the steel, number three size, 7 8 ounce of it, I counted that out to be right around 77 pellets, not 77, 123. The number four bismuth was 77 pellets, giving us a total of about 200 pellets in this shell. So pretty good pellet count. But uh, let's go ahead and take our LBC 50 here and get that slit. I'm using Gary Kasky's four pedal adjustable 10 gauge wad slitter. If you want any of Gary's tools, facebook.com slash gary.d.caskey. And Gary, I meant to give you my phone number the other day so we could call, uh, get on call with each other, but I totally forgot. Sorry about that, but I will get that to you. Anyway, just push down and we have a four pedal. Uh, it's not going to come off. Anyway, four pedal, three quarter cut on that, which is what the original data called for. Four pedals and three quarter cut is actually my preferred slit depth. Now with these LBC wads and some of the CSDs and there's a few others, a three quarter cut on the pedals does not work with buckshot if you're not using a ported choke. If you're using a ported choke, it's okay, but I have had people tell us that even with a ported choke, sometimes the pellets don't leave the wad. So if you're using buckshot with these, I recommend just full cutting it and there are windows in this wad right here. You need to slit into the window. Those are the hinge points for the pedals if you're cutting them all the way down. And just seat our wad down in there. We are at the exact right stack height for a bold crimp, which is what this calls for. Now, obviously steel is much harder than bismuth as it is lead. So the steel is gonna go on bottom. That makes sense to me anyway, because the bismuth obviously being much softer you don't want the steel coming on top of it and smashing those really soft, somewhat brittle pellets. If you guys didn't know, brittle bismuth is kind of brittle, especially if it's pure bismuth, which I don't think a lot of manufacturers uh, put out pure bismuth pellets. I've only seen them 
alloyed with antimony to make them harder, less prone to shatter. But yeah, steel is going on bottom. We need 7 8 ounce, which is 0 0.7, sorry, 0.88 on a scale. It's not exact, but I just go for 8 8, 8 7, 8 8, and call it good. That's set to grains. We need ounces. There we go. There's 6 4. And a little bit more. And we have 0.88 exactly. All right. So there's our steel. As you can tell, these are a little bit more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Involved to put together. You have to do these by hand. Unless you have two presses, that is. But we are at 1.29 there. And up to one and three eighth. I need one more pellet. There we go. 1.38 even. One and three eighth ounces. And as you can see, all of those pellets are contained within the wad, especially when it's vertical, not lean sideways a little bit. But we are ready for some buffer. That's not my buffer. Right here it is. I'm using BPI BSB, my favorite buffer. Just going to use one scoop of a Lee 2.2 CC dipper. Get that dumped in. Actually, we'll go a little bit more. I typically like my hauls full at the top right there. It's about where I like it with the buffer. Vibrating massager and just settle that buffer in. Takes a little bit longer because this is small shot. With buckshot, it's near instant. But we about have it right there. Took about 10 seconds. And you can see it is flush with the top row of pellets. I love putting together waterfowl stuff and turkey assemblies. I have to say that word. But anyway, ready for a pre-print. You don't need an overshot card with this because stack height is perfect. A rabassator. It did its job pretty well. Now we're ready to uh, fold this. So, take it over to the press. Final print. And this does call for a got print finisher, which I will do because that right there is a little bit too flat for my liking. The gop is going to deeper set, deepen the crimp just a little bit. And uh, once I do that, it'll look really, really nice. The stack height might actually be a little bit too tall. That's a lot of this stuff right here with a full length wad. And here's the end result. Looks really, really nice. Good taper on it. And there you go guys no bulging anywhere the lbc 50 is a non-tox wad it's not really going to bulge but that is a great looking shell right there and i'd say it's an absolute hammer on ducks a little bit of info on duplexed assemblies that is nothing new uh, manufacturers have been doing that for decades in the 90s and early 2000s remington was doing it with their lead shot they even had some turkey loads that were duplexed four and six shot i actually have some of those and they pattern pretty good Federal does it with their third degree. I think they mix three different sizes together. Heavy Shot does it. The Magnum Blend is a four, five, and six, if I'm not mistaken. Some of you guys that actually waterfowl hunt have told me you like to mix number two steel with number eight TSS. I'd say that's pretty good geese medicine right there. Josh has put together a whole pile of duplexes with lead. He likes to do four and seven and a half, or six, seven and a half, four and six five and seven and a half there's endless possibilities obviously but he has put together some really good turkey assemblies that you wouldn't think pattern would pattern well but they do he doesn't even use a full length wad half the time he just gas seal x12x fiber cushion wad whatever size of shot he wants on the bottom then more fiber cushion wad then the next size of shot on top of that more fiber cushion wad and fold crimp and it patterns really, really well. Personally, I think duplex assemblies are really, really cool, and I wish factories would put out more of them. But anyway, guys, I guess that's all I have for you. Please like and subscribe. We always appreciate that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and we'll get back to you. And if you want to, go check out our Patreon. It's as low as a dollar a month, and you guys get early access to content. A link to that, as well as a link to our Instagram, Patreon, Rumble, and merch store will be in the description below. But other than that, you guys take it easy. We'll see you in the next one.